guys, Barbara here. Sit back and relax. Today's episode of The Bear Pantry Show is gonna be exciting. I'm gonna have a recipe for you guys for lunch. Uh, we're gonna have a review and a health or beauty tip. I missed all of that. Yeah. I missed all of that. Where do we look about? I said, no, yeah, yeah. Ask me to come in your set and you start to yak, 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 cause I can walk right out your set. This is not what he was promised. Where's his RV? Where's his food? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so all of that for nothing because he knows he still has to cook with me for the Sunday brunch. <laughs> so this is what we're doing, Belizean panadas. Now you guys know I have a video here at the side already on this, but we want to do a redo. So we're just gonna do two cans of tuna, and this was the kind that's like in water, not in oil. I don't like tuna that's in oil. This is for the sauce that's gonna go on top of the panadas, so don't worry about this yet, all right? This is what's gonna go inside, and let me move out of Joe's way. Joe's gonna be cooking the fish for me. Joe, oh by the way, say hello, baby. Hello everybody. They got me in the kitchen this morning. We're doing Sunday brunch. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so I'm gonna take care of the masa. You can start, babe. You can start over there with your fish because I'm gonna take care of the masa. So I'm gonna take care of the masa and Joe took me this morning to go buy this. Look at this. It is still warm, guys, see? It's sweating. And take a look at what I recorded when I went to the store. Show you how the tortillas are made. It was so hard. This is a new place that I'm buying it from. Um, where did we go, Joe? Cardenas? We went to Cardenas, but Cardenas. the other place, he says Cardenas. Cardenas. Wow. The other place closed down, and so we went there, and I'm telling the guy, I don't want the prepared one because they do sell a masa that's already prepared, but it has their stuff in it. I don't want their stuff that they put in it to make their tamales. I want to make my own thing. So this is two pounds, and I'm not going to make all of this in panadas. I'm going to do some in salbutes. And I may or may not show you that on this video. We'll see. We'll see as we go along. But I do have the stuff off to the side there for the salbutes. But this part starts the same. Okay, so let me get my ring off. And let me tell you guys something. A lot of people complained at the last video that I put up with the panadis or the salbutes because I put this in it. Three tablespoons of flour. Now I learned this from Miriam, my Uncle Roger's girlfriend. And she's good at what she does. She gave me quite a few recipes for the show. And she, the people are like, why are you going to put flour with corn? I was like, if you don't want to do that, don't do it. We put it in here as a binding thing because this is kind of wet. See? See? Come in, Jory, show the people. Jory's running camera. See, it's kind of wet. And when you squish it in this thing right here, it doesn't respond well. So that's why we put some flour, just a teaspoon of salt, because they already have some salt in this. Two teaspoons of baking powder because you want it to be light. And then we're gonna put some ricotta, and this is how I have the ricotta right now. My sister brought some back from Belize for me. This is the same powdered ricotta. If you don't have this, use paprika, but I absolutely hate paprika. So, let's go this. Paprika tastes like, and smells like a tea for me. That's why I don't like it. So this is just to give it some color, so it won't just look like pale like that, okay? And we just wanna work this in to make the dough form back again. Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> it's burning my fingers, guys. <laughs> so meanwhile, over at the ranch, what's Joe's doing? We're back at the ranch. I'm hashing the fish. You're hashing the fish? Okay. Yeah. Put some cilantro, some onions. I'm gonna put a little bit on. Are you gonna add any salt Not to it? Not really, it's already salt. Why don't we add it? Because the fish has salt already mm -hmm. in the can? Okay, mm -hmm. so you're gonna add some black pepper though, right? Yep. You know, incidentally, you can add some, um, jalapeno or habanero, whichever one you want, inside the fish. But because I'm adding it to the sauce, and most people eat panadas with the sauce and not, with, and, and not without the sauce, I don't want it to be too hot. I'm always mindful of any kind of guests that might be coming that cannot tolerate all this heat, okay? So just let me get this worked in. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the ricotta. And the ricotta is made from the achiote. I want to thank you guys so much for voting for me at this contest that I'm in. I'm practicing all these recipes so that if I win, when I go on the show, I don't embarrass us, okay? Because you guys are there with me. So this is a practice run for this in case I do it, okay? I probably would not do panadas, but I would do salbutes as one of my um, recipes. So what I'm going to do right here as Joe continues to deal with the fish is just like pinch off these balls, like a golf ball size and just like put them right back in this bowl and I'll be back when all the magic is happening. 
All right, guys, so Joe is going to squish for me because he's good at it. So normally, I would take like shopping bags, plastic shopping bags, and just cut them into these little squares. They don't have to be even or nothing. I try not to use the part that has the printing just because it's ink and all that stuff. But if I go to this TV show that I'm trying to win this contest for, it's going to look kind of wonky to put this to do the stuff if I do this, right? So I went all high class and I cut up a Ziploc bag, or this is not Ziploc, that's a brand, I just a <laughs> reclosable bag. And Joe is gonna squish, put the fish in, and you guys know that you can also do this with refried beans. I've tried it with chicken and it's nasty. Don't do it, chicken. So watch how you squish, babe. You have to push it back more because you don't want to get too thin and then this falls apart on you. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go over to the stove and get the oil ready. But let's watch Joe do this first one. Joe's like so neat with it. I'm so, what? what's the word we say in Creole? Joe's slovering. I'm so slovering with it. <laughs> How does the plastic feel? Does it feel okay? Like, like yeah. does it feel better than do it, doing this? Yeah. All right, so let's go over to the stove so I can show you how much oil to use. Everyone always asks, what oil do you use? I use canola, but whatever cooking oil you have, is that what, that's what you use. So I can't tell you like how many cups. I try to put that in a cookbook, like three cups. But you need for that thing to be kind of covered in there. So we're just going to let the oil heat up and then we're going to start frying them. So this is how you make the sauce that goes on the top. A lot of Belizeans will use just the onion, the diced onion. But I always use the onions with the cabbage. Um, other people might use just the cabbage. So it's just chopped up cabbage right here. And then, of course, the jalapeno. You can use um, habanero or any pepper that you like. This is what I'm using. So I'm not making a whole lot because we're not going to do a whole lot of the panadas today. And then let me show you what else we add to this. This is three ounces of distilled white vinegar, and then the rest is water. Just fill it to the top like that, and then we're gonna hit that with some salt and some black pepper. So it's, it's a big pinch, a couple of big pinches of the salt. And you can taste it too, okay? See how you like it. But the distilled um, white vinegar, the white distilled vinegar, takes that kick off of the onion. So it's not like giving you bad breath and stinging it. Stir it up. And pretty much the sauce is ready. This is the topping for the panadas. And we don't call it empanada. Okay, it's panadas. All right, guys, so see what Joe's doing here. The difference between using that, because I don't have a lot of these bags to cut up. So the difference between using that and these is that when you open one of these, you're gonna have it folded in that so the air doesn't catch it. So I'm gonna have Joe slow down and not make too much more till my oil is ready because if the air catches it, it'll start to crack on you, okay? So a lot of people will set this out on some type of shrink wrap or some type of plastic like this and then cover it up with some type of a damp cloth, but I'm not running a panada shop, so I'm not gonna have to do that. Wait, I'm trying to find a spot to talk from. Incidentally, there are quite a few of you that have used my panadas recipe to open your own panada shop and is making money at it. And some of you have come back to tell me this and thank me and you don't even know how that makes me feel. Because this is what I want for people to be self-sufficient. Some people did it and came back and said, oh, it was my grandma's recipe. You know Belizean grandmas don't leave you with no recipe, so stop lying. <laughs> I don't need no dividend. Your thanks is enough, okay? That that blesses me. And the stuff that you guys are writing on the um, page for the contest that I'm in, I'm gonna print those off. I'm gonna like, what do you what do you call it, Joe, with the screen? Save screenshot. It. Screenshot. I'm gonna screenshot the wow, screen. Wow, really? <laughs> I'm old. And cut it apart, print it out, put it on a billboard, and have it forever, okay? <laughs> oh, so Joe went ahead of us already. Come see. So let me tell you guys. See, that's cracking. Some air touched it and this is frying a little bit too fast 
you want to have it on medium because then the insides won't cook not the fish on the inside but the mass on the inside will not cook if it's frying too fast okay so with panadas you kind of want it a little bit slower so let me flip Okay. And you don't want to overcrowd your pot. You hear that popping? That's because some fish is falling out of that one that broke open. So that's why I don't want Joe to make too many more. Because we're not wrapping them up in that thing. Do they fry four more or less, Joe? Like a couple minutes on each side? Mm -hmm. So see this one? It's in the bag still. So we won't have any trouble with these ones, see? I might have to suck it up and use these bags on that show if I get picked. You want to be all fancy? I know, I wanted to be fancy with this, um, the reposable bag thingy, but not working out. And I'm only going to fry these eight right now, because it's only Joe and me that's going to be eating this for brunch. And I don't want it to sit there and get cold, okay? That's so you don't, you don't want to have this for a party, because you're going to be frying all day long. See how poofy this is? That's because of the baking powder that we put in it, okay? That's why we put the baking powder in. So this is panadas for brunch, and I may or may not show you the salbutas in this video. But if I do, I'm going to show you like just a little bit. This is the topping for the salbutas right here. This is the topping. It's cilantro, tomatoes, and cabbage. And we put a different sauce on it. We don't put the vinegar, okay? But I have to cook the chicken yet, so I might come back and show you, okay? Cool? Cool. Like me. So Joe's making his plate while I get my plate. When it comes to these kind of fried things, everybody take care of their own selves. Themselves. Them own selves. That sounds wrong to say them own selves. Yeah. All right, daddy's going to taste. Mm. <laughs> Make a big old mess, Joe. It's good, folks. All right, so let me get mine. See, it's not a whole lot of jalapenos in there. You could put more, okay? This is your thing. Do it the way you want to do it. I just didn't want too much pepper this early in the morning. Now, let me get mine. I used to love this for lunch when I was a kid growing up in Belize. But I love the beans one. Ready? No. This is the topping for the salbutes. I'm going to chop some of this up. You have some tomatoes, some cilantro. We're going to use some Italian dressing. As promised, I'm going to show you guys how to do the salbutes, okay? Belizean salbutes. So I just cooked half of a chicken that I had left over because I made fried chicken the other day and the kids weren't here, so I only made a little bit. And I just stewed it. You can go to the store and buy one of those rotisserie chicken. That will be just fine. You can bake your chicken. You can roast it in the um, in the broiler. Just anything that you want to do to make the chicken cook and spicy, all right? And then shred it from the bone. You don't want to chop it up, okay? You want to shred it. And then now what we're going to do with the masa, remember when we did it for the panades? Instead of putting the stuff on the inside and folding it. Now, I've tried this before like putting the chicken on the inside, fold it and fry it like the panadas, but I really didn't like the taste of it. I like it with beans or with fish and that's it. So <clears throat> you flatten it out and then you fry it. Now you're gonna have to fry it on the high temperature, not like the panadas where we had it between low and medium. This is gonna be full on high temperature, fried on both sides for a couple of minutes. And then now we dress it with the chicken, the cabbage salad that I made or the cabbage sauce. You guys saw how I did that, right? I just basically chopped up the cabbage, diced up some Roma tomatoes and some cilantro, and then just hit it with some Italian dressing. It's very, very simple to do this. And then we top it off with this and some Parmesan cheese. Now, if you don't have any Parmesan cheese, you can use some grated Dutch cheese, which is what we do in Belize, grated Dutch cheese. We don't get too much Parmesan and stuff there. So very simple. So you have two recipes in one right here, guys. This recipe is brought to you by Not My Mum's Cookbook, Recipes from the Mind of a Teenager by Jada Julianne. A few months ago, Joe bought one of those bulky car jump starter things from Costco and it started acting up kind of right away. So he took it back and he took the money and he bought this. The car jump start and portable power bank. 
Joe's going to show us all the nifty little things he's been using this equipment for. This is a commercial for the Minimax, but Joe just bought the Win Plus and he's going to charge it up and review it for us. Alright guys, so the instruction says that if the thing has three bars, at least three bars, see, there's a fourth bar missing, we should be able to jump start Let's see. the vehicle. And Joe killed the battery because he was messing around with trying to fix the window, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see. Let's see what happened. If it works, don't know. If you look, look, see. Huh? Huh? Not okay. it. So it won't start. It won't start. If not, I will just find your cup. You know, but you know how. You went to the lease? So red with red and black with black. Right after we jump started the SUV, we had to leave, so I'm using the cord that comes included with the equipment to go ahead and fully charge the battery pack via the cigarette lighter. Now that it's at 100% charged, I want to go ahead and see how long it'll take to charge my cell phone, which is only at 49% battery power right now. So see, 49% battery power, and this is at 100%. It has all the bars. So I'm going to use the cord that came with the cell phone, plug it into the USB. There's another slot there that you could be charging two things at the same time. It's 547 right now. So let's see how long it takes. 709, a little bit past an hour, not bad at all. And let's see how much, how many bars we lost. So one bar, not too bad. Now you want to go ahead and keep it fully charged in case of an emergency, okay? Here we are, Jay's car is in the curse spot. And every time, we were gone for four days and the car worked fine. This, yeah, this is an old battery. And as soon as we left, as soon as she goes to school. So we're gonna jump it using the little mini jumper thing, so let's watch. You got my keys, right? Okay. Gotta jump the little car, go. The only thing that sucks about those little jumpers is the wire's kind of short. I'm pretty sure if you go like on Amazon, they'll have a giant wire for this type of thing. You just hook it up. Try data. Oh, that was quick. There we go. Ah, we did it. Now we just gotta put up the little battery. See? That easy. I didn't even see when he did it. I think he hit the button and turned it on, but now it's good. There you go, people. Little thing works great. Super compact. We all need one of those. It's just good to have. Alright, everybody. Crisis averted.
Wasn't it kind of crazy how Jada just took the thread and threaded her eyebrow? I'm like, this little girl can do everything. She can cut hair, she can do her own makeup, she can thread eyebrows. I'm telling you, ever since she started, we don't go to the shop anymore. $9 plus $2 tip. I'm telling you, we save $11 every couple of weeks, which I only went twice a year. So my eyebrows don't grow too fast. But she threads all her little friends, little boys that come around here, her girlfriends, herself, me, and guess how she started? She watched a couple of YouTube videos with some beautiful Indian girls showing how to get it done. And then she practiced on Joshua's leg first. <laughs> and then she started practicing on herself and on others. So thank you, Jada, for your little submission to this week's episode. I want to thank you guys so much for allowing me access into your home. I know that access at first is a gift, then it's a continuous test, and then it is a reward. See you later.